Thank you guys on the desk. Yeah, honestly, I feel for that. I feel like Danny, just along for the ride. Sometimes that's the <laughs> best place to be, especially when it's a Washington Justice game. And you know how Boston kind of performed yesterday? Maybe, you know, maybe they just pick it up a little bit. Rose, what do you think? Boston, mm. Washington, who has the edge here? Well, I think that both teams have some things they need to clean up from what we saw from yesterday's games, and I think that's going to be the big determining factor. I think both teams have a chance to be able to win, but it's like, you know, are we going to see Sombra EMPs actually go off this match, or are we going to really see, you know, Punk be able to, like, get aggressive with the Zarya? See, those are the questions I feel like I need answers to to make a choice. Okay, well, that's not how predictions work. Sorry. So, uh... <laughs> There's your answer, no, that's fine. not answer to your answer to your question. No, that's honestly fine. I think playing has been really interesting thus far because we've not really seen any like close bout yet, at least in mm. day number one. Both the games were 3 0. And yeah. the Boston Uprising series against the Toronto Defiant was the seventh fastest series we've had in overall league history, which is insane to think about. Um, it felt like a dream, in a way, a nightmare, if you're the boss and uprising, right? Um, not exactly the kind of performance you want stepping into the play-ins where you need to be ultra clutch. But then you could also, you know, fair enough, uh, you were playing against uh, a team that's done fairly well up until this point. Oh, uh, playing Mayhem, sorry, not Defiant yesterday. I've got Defiant still on the brain. Um, yeah, the Mayhem, who just beat the Defiant, you know, you're thinking, well, okay, they're the flavor, they're the favorites coming into the play-ins, at least for a lot of people. So you, well, okay, you kind of take that in your stride. You got beaten one of the, by one of the more powerful teams here. Um, but going down 3-0 like that, Boston looking pretty bewildered yesterday after that upper bracket brawl. Uh, Seeker, Victoria, Punk, Faith, and Crimson is the uh, starting five for the Boston Uprising. Same kind of dealio we saw as yesterday against the Mayhem. And what can you really say about the yesterday's game, Rose? It feels like you just want to go again. You want yeah, to forget about it. I think so. I, I mean, here's, uh, I think this is a stat the desk touched on yesterday, but it was 113 final blows for Mayhem versus 37 for Boston. So when we oh, say 3-0, yeah. we mean it was a 3-0. It was pretty one-sided. And for Boston, it just really felt like we didn't get a great sample size of what this team is capable of. It was the pace that Florida was setting yesterday that really threw Boston off of their game plan where Florida was using alt first. Boston didn't always have a chance to respond. And we're always forcing Boston into these weird positions where they had to use their immortality fields early or they had to try to back away from the fight. And sometimes the disengage just wasn't there depending on what kind of angle Seeker, for example, on the Sojourn was trying to take with Faith on the Lucio. I think that when, at the end of the day, you just need to see this team kind of recuperate, regroup themselves, and that's exactly what they're going to try to do here. Jack, you said it perfectly. Just try to go again. Well, let's have a look at the justice, their opponents. Remember, loser goes home. They're going to want to bring down the gavel today. They want to make it through, right? We know Decay, when he reaches this kind of peak level of gameplay in like a playoffs kind of scenario. Like you kind of want him to step up right here and right now. They also had a 3-0 series the other day. Uh, Assassin, Decay, Kalios, and Krillin, and opener, your starting five. I think what Scott was saying on the desk and what they were kind of all discussing was where do they go with their cobs? Are we going to see the Sombra, which had, I want to say middling, but maybe that's putting it too nicely? Uh, it might be a little too nice for it. I think yeah. the way that we like to describe that Sombra composition is that poor Washington, this is not the first time that this has happened, but the second, it's just been kind of towards the end of the stage, but they've been constantly looking for these perfect opportunities to get four or five player EMPs. And that leads them to holding on to that key ultimate for too long where, you know, even in their series yesterday, they had moments where they might have been able to get a second one online in the time that it took for them to use the one that they had. And that's not what you want to see when you have a Sombra. You're really looking at those EMPs to just be big fight finishers. And you just even want maybe one or two members. Just try to swing the odds in your favor. I mean... Honestly, just getting a one man on the tank, sometimes exactly. better than nothing, you know? Exactly. You just focus on the Zarya, Diva, whatever tank that is uh, that you do EMP. 
You don't want to be holding on to it, because then you're like sunk cost fallacy. You're like, well, no, I need to get the perfect one. Yeah, and but it's like next fight, and you're like, you'll get it. Eh. And then like, yeah, yeah, or maybe you get forced to translocate early, and then all of a sudden somebody on your team goes down, and so the EMP just, just gets held. Exactly. So I really hope that for Boston, it's just about regrouping around the Punk, Zarya, or maybe trying to pull out those final stops to keep themselves in this season just a match longer. Or for Washington, Washington, you know, kind of also just cleaning up their engages where they are so good at getting those first picks, but sometimes it's about the follow up. Yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about Punk Zarya. I mean, in the Countdown Cup, like, he's tied for second in final blows. Yep. High energy charge kills and average energy. He was about second place, so you're feeling pretty good if you're the uprising. Of course, like I said, maybe you want to, like, the men in black pen where you just erase your memory. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yesterday. We are jumping into a brief pause. Um, looks like there's a small problem on the justice side of things. So they're just going to iron them out. Want to make sure this match is perfect, of course. Exactly. Your season is on the line here. You do not want to end your run today. You need to face the Toronto to fight a little bit later. Whoever wins this series. So a lot on the line. Yep. <laughs> It's going to be a long road, too, for, for whichever team. But this is the first hurdle, and sometimes you just have to take one map at a time. So uh, you got to yeah, kind of see what you got going on there. But, you know, you brought up some of those stats, Jack. Here's just a visual to look over where Punk really does stand up to the rest of the Zarya in the field for the Countdown Cup qualifiers. And what I find really interesting about this is despite the fact that Punk has shown us multiple different looks in terms of tank heroes that he's played this stage as well as just diversity of the compositions he's still this high up there yeah remember they were swapping mag in and out too on the boston not rising side of things they were yeah no uh, nope. it just it just didn't it didn't make a whole lot of sense when it came down to it i know that was that disgusting style there um with Punk in and out of the of the lineup, but having him in, obviously, uh, aided them to get to the playing situation. Looks like both teams are ready to go. Just peep, just peep and match chat. Just peep and match chat, seeing what's up. Looks like we're gonna get into this in just a moment. Now, I will, quickly before we get in, kind of go over what people are hovering. We're seven seconds before the doors open, so it does look like Justice are going with this more meta cop. So Assassin's on the Genji, Decay on Sojin, Kalios on Zarya, etc. Krillin opener on Bat and Lucio. So we aren't seeing any more of this Sombra coming out from the Justice. Of course, we might see it a little bit later, but for Ruins right now, it looks like they just want to go with this. I think that, Ru that for Ruins, having Decay on the Sojourn makes a little bit more sense. So while you are looking at the Sombra being able to help get you those engages, the Sombra composition just fares better when you have time to be able to get the setup necessary in order to get the hack and then execute on it. For Decay's Sojourn, I mean, you're playing on a map that is historically good for those longer sight lines. So you're really expecting both Decay and Seeker to be looking for those initial picks. Nice little bit of uh, damage there from Assassin. Seekers have to back all the way up. As long as you can get Decay and Seeker on the other side into a position where you can just free fire onto uh, Zarya, force those bubbles, it, they should be pretty good. Speaking of forcing things, Crimson's lamps are already dead. The Justice do march on forward. Seeker claims the first kill though on Assassin. Justice, regardless of that, do end up capping the point first. And but Seeker's on a nice little angle and the justice just aren't really looking at it whatsoever looks like justice are going to hold on to that point for too long 12 percent is the only thing they garner as boston flip i love the way that boston played that as well they kind of just waited for washington to overextend when they did go after trying to get the immortality field and that was just the perfect opportunity for seeker to just go yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and pop the rail gun and see what happens there but i like also how aggressive they're playing but it looks like that got punished Sorry, how did Opener kill Seeker like that? Was that just a, a sweet little solo kill? Okay, Justice win that fight, I, that I guess. Uh, alrighty, okay, there you go, Justice win that fight. I'm not sure how Opener got into a position where he could kill Seeker. Maybe Seeker didn't have his power slide, not entirely sure, but there you go, Justice win regardless. I, I mean, that could have just been like a, a bunch of Cheerios to the head and... Uh, Taking out the soldier, sure. All right. I mean, the Lucios are here to play today, and you're going to see them try to take this high ground away from the Genjis and the soldiers if they're able to grab that as well. 
Yeah, but Ult's coming up on the line as well. Corinne lays down that window. Assassin's still trying to duel Victoria out on the high ground for some ult charge towards that blade. You can see the window being placed and the justice end up just backing up. All good. It was a little bit of a space creation tool, but no initial kills. Now a window comes up for Crimso, but Justice can uh, just escort himself around these pillars. A Graviton Turtron Punk is pretty decent, but the beat and the lamp is going to save Kalios' life. Not enough damage to say it, uh, to uh, sustain Boston Uprising through that fight, though, as Assassin pulls the blade and finds two. The Justice now is 60% online as uh, the Boston Uprising have to escort themselves back to spawn. Punk loses all of his energy as well on the exit. Yeah, that's going to be a huge reset there as well for the Boston Uprising when Kalios is going to be able to hold on to that charge that Punk just lost. And when you're looking at last fight territory, you're looking at almost every all being off the table except for those overclocks. Well, uh, Justice are going to be in a better position with that one when Decay is already set up to be able to use this ult and Seeker's going to have to get to a position. Jesus Christ. All right, Faith gets his head taken clean off. Seeker using his overclock a little bit sooner. Open is trying to go for the two beat there, but doesn't end up taking out uh, Seeker. But Decay is still on the field. He managed to take out Seeker, and now it's a, a small little brawl. Victoria's super low, he's got no cooldowns left. Manji's still to force out the land from Krillin as he gets chased down. The dash from Victoria ends up completely missing, but the boss not rising still managed to find the flip. Oh my goodness, yeah, I think you were really hoping to be able to take out Krillin there, but the reset was already going to come through. Justice are able to disengage from that fight, but now Boston are just absolutely trying to climb up a mountain here with this percentage. Yeah, Krillin's got the window online already. You could use that on the statue to get a nice little angle. He's actually forced the boss not rising off of the point, so just get a free cap. Now the dive comes in from Victoria, but he doesn't have a blade, so he's got no damage. Speaking of which, yep, Assassin's still doing work. Crimzo in the back line goes down, and now no supports from the boss not rising, and no members left on the point. Justice is going to be able to take round number one. Really well played there by the Justice. I think it was unfortunate that Crimzo didn't have the Amplification Matrix online to be able to contend with the one that Krillin had ready to go. And when Justice are able to play this game where they're kind of splitting up the Uprising to be contending on different parts of the map, a lot of these different 1v1s are happening that Boston just aren't winning out right now. So I feel like with the Zarya, you have to play a bit together as a unit instead of trying to take these duels that Washington have just been really good at forcing other teams to do. Yeah, it felt like Victoria there wanted a little bit more backup. He ended up dashing in, uses a reflect pretty quickly. The mega health back was up, or it was there for a brief moment, disappeared, so yeah, no real sustain. Okay, this is Ooh. the comp that we were, and the desk was kind of talking about. Assassin back on the Sombra, Decay on Tracer. A bit more of an older look. But this is a way better so map to do it game. for. It's a way better map. I mean, look at the territorial control that you can have. So many hidey places as well for that Sombra to be able to come out of the woodwork from. And when you're able to control these health packs, you are also making it way more difficult for those solo operators like Seeker and Victoria of Boston to actually take these off angles together. Boss not right, he's just holding down one section of the map as five people. A nice hack does result in Victoria's death, and the Justice still manages to sneak the point away. It's all about holding on to it though. It doesn't look like they're gonna be able to do so, but once again the boss not right kind of just stack it all up together. Seeker does get hacked, but he's silly bubble by punk, so he's managed to stay alive for the time being. Assassin can't get out alive, tried to throw transit but it wasn't to be. Exactly the same situation, in fact, as what happened on map number one, where Justice take the point, but then boss not rising almost instantly respond with a flip. Well, the Sombra comp is going to require Washington to play a bit more patiently. And so you'll see Boston hold on to the point for a, a pretty good while, maybe up till about 40%, while you see Assassin start to get into position. He's already snuck into the back line of Boston, and so has Decay, for that matter. Both of them have just sprinted to point. Look at Grimzo, he's, he's on top of the lighthouse structure. Like, how can you even get there if you're Assassin at that point? You have to send Kalios to try and chase him away, which is actually what Kalios is doing right now. Grimzo happy to kind of take the 1v1, even putting down the lamp. 
However, that is a big cooldown that has been used already, but Kalios pays for that with the health of his mech. And the boss and Night Rising are just pushing on forward. They end up killing Krillin, and now Opener, the last surviving member of the support line, is quickly dealt with as the boss and Uprising are more than happy uh, in just taking on this Sombra comp. Like, I don't want to put a bad word out there, Rose, but it kind of blows. Like, 65% <laughs> on board. They've not really found any just manual hacks which result in kills up to this point, so you're really just relying on the EMP. It's been too slow, and that EMP might not even come online either. At least somebody from Washington Justice has been able to get to the point to be able to trigger uh, some type of contest, but Boston still have five holes to use. Dr. K gets taken down by Faith, and now Punk's fully charged up on that Zarya. High ground, by the way. Crimzo just puts up a window, and Seeker and him could both shoot through it. There's the D-Mech onto Kalio. So it forces out a transcend. This is how both support alters have been used. A freely braid for Victoria as he jumps on in. The Washington Justice just in this comp, again, can't use the EMP. Assassin's still got it, and the round is over. Decay's on the point, he's got a pulse, throws it out, hits it with the miss, and uh, well, that'll be it. I mean, maybe Assassin gets back just in time. Opener tried to go for the retouch to get OT, but once again, this Sombra comp falling rather short. Not the best look that we've seen from Washington. That just looked like they never got a chance to get in position to use it. And I think this is Boston just studying up on how Washington might want to play this comp. They've played it often enough that there's plenty of VOD for Boston to review. And if they're looking at it and trying to think about how they're going to play against it, then it's really just don't let the Sombra set up. So, uh, you know, let's see this replay though. Faith just, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> There you go. I was wondering how Decay died there. Nice boop attempt, but there was a good recovery <laughs> from Decay's Tracer. But, you know, this is kind of like the 1v1 also working out for Boston this time around. All right, Miracoms. All right. Okay, okay back Justice. to it. Okay. Back to, back to Miracom. I wonder if they're going to try and force this a little bit later down the line, too, with the Sombra comp. It feels quite haphazard uh, right now. Punk got a nice little half angle there in disguise. I'd love to see it. Nice little beat hop from the Zarya. Take Cage is quite important to mission around this Zarya comp. A lot of places for your supports to hide behind. As well as Seeker, to be fair. Speaking of people who can't hide, it's uh, Krillin. He's already dead. Seeker managed to force her out that lamp, kill it off, and then the execution came through. Kalios is also found himself back in the spawn room as the Justice is chased away from the point. It looks like for the first time this map, Austin might be able to capture the point first. Wow, Seeker and Victoria are just having their way with the Justice in this first one. Yeah, they are definitely finding their groove, and that's what we wanted to see these DPS do, uh, especially as we, you know, we're seeing Victoria actually have pretty decent stats there for the Genji. You really are hoping that he can kind of live up to that initial debut that he made on this hero this season. Uh, so really looking for those solo kills to kind of stay up there on the top of the leaderboard in that stat. But he's also getting some really nice support there as well. You'll see Faith kind of following him too. Okay, well, <laughs> Opener just dives in and dies. That's uh, rather unfortunate. Go through the disruptor shot of the Lucio, like you're just trying to bounce and you know, wall ride right, but it does end up slowing you down. Might be a couple of nice resets in Victoria's future. Nope, no, it's not. He gets flung off into a stratosphere by Kalios. They don't have trading Genji's, and Opener died a little moment ago, so it should be good for the Uprising to hold at least for the time being. Punk has spotted a Decay trying to get a nice angle on the back line. Actually forces out Crimzo's lamp, but look at this. Kalios tried to make a move in, but uh, was rather unsuccessful. Justice once again managed to sneak away the point somehow, but uh, the Boston Uprising with numbers will be able to get the flip rather quick. Yeah, that's going to be another flip back into Boston's favor. And now, like after you see the amplification matrix, they're kind of ready to rumble with four other ultimates. The grab and the sound barrier are at the ready. Victoria just got the Dragon Blade online too. So there's a lot of tools that Boston can use here to just keep control. And they're really looking at one good by maybe two, depending on how fast the reset is. Oh, straight to the spawn doors. No way Decay dies on the spawn doors to Victoria's Blade. Oh, that's so unlucky. Oh, Krillin uh, switches over to Mercy real quick to get the res on Decay. All right, don't need to wait a few more seconds. I mean, they've got 20% to really deal with, so Justice have to get back in time. Meanwhile, Assassin's getting booped off the map by Faith. Does he get... Oh, he does.
does, yes, okay. No kill confirmation there by Faith, and a good thing for the Justice is Assassin has that blade. It is final fight approaching, and uh, Justice have both DPS ults, and maybe the beat coming online rather soon. Punk ends up using the grab, he manages to catch a couple of people, and the lap is gonna save Kalios, but only for a brief moment. The boss is not rising, not really paying attention to Assassin, as uh, Seeker ends up getting taken down. Overtime is here, meaning Justice have to put themselves on the point almost permanently now, but the numbers are dwindling. A beat hitting two people, that is Assassin and Opener, as they are the last members left alive on the point. The boss nut rising just have too many numbers, and that'll be it. Boston end up taking the first map two to one. What a start there for Boston, and, and this was after such a close first round as well, where Washington were able to make that more meta composition work on Ruins. So really exciting to see how Boston is able to make a comeback here, but a lot remains to be seen though, Jaws. Do, do Washington try this somber composition again, or was that really a one and done for them moving forward in the series? He's loser's pick, so uh, yeah, Justice losing the first map. Maybe they go to something a little bit more favorable for them. I mean, look, at the end of the day, the Sombra, it kind of got bobbed, being real. Like, they did get an EMP, but they didn't end up using it because it took a little bit too long to build and then get yourself into a position. Exactly what you pointed out, Rose, at the very top of this series. We'll have to see where they want to go. We're going to jump to a break as we go into hybrid. We'll see you in a bit.
All right, a strong start for the uprising as we're in the latter half of the play-ins at this point. Loser will go home after this match. Boss not rising. And with this guy at the helm, looking pretty damn good. His Genji, Victoria, who wasn't really known for a Genji play, uh, uh, coming into the kind of the planes and a couple of weeks leading up for it. Everybody was a bit shocked in to see Victoria in on that pick. And hey, he's doing pretty well with it thus far. We'll see if this success can continue. Yeah, I mean, he's first in solo kills. He's got 1.1 per 10. He's fourth in terms of hero damage on average at 7,500. So yeah, look at that, over a thousand more than his average on that. Uh, well, I know it's like not per 10, but you know what I mean. It still looks good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm not sure how fast that map was, but probably around 10 minutes. Probably so, around yeah, 10, all, yeah. All good. We are going to King's Row now. Oh, all right, Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they get to pick, and if it kings. So I'm curious if Assassin does go back to Sombra uh, and Decay on the Tracer, Kalios, Diva, etc. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious because you it didn't really work it. out on Ilios, but you can do it on Kings. Like I don't think it's an impossibility. Although the way Ju the way the Boss Knight Rosen were playing Rose, they very much saw that coming. Like we just yes. slack as five. You can't pick us off. We slack as five. Someone gets hacked, yeah, but we have immortality field. We can all stand in if we exactly. need it. Regenerative burst is going to hit everybody. Uh, the BAP's going to be right clicking the floor, like literally just looking at the floor, right clicking, and that's going to hit everybody. So it's a lot harder for the summer to find value there. Well, um, it's it's really interesting we'll to watch how teams have responded to the Sombra over the course of the stage. You know, at the beginning, I feel like Sombra was everywhere for every single team, where it really was about the Tracer, the Sombra working in tandem with the D.Va, uh, and just to be able to get those dives. But a ton of teams have started to move away from that, but we're still on the same patch. So it's just interesting to see how teams have adjusted. Part of it is that I think a lot of teams figured out that Zarya is just absurdly strong right now compared to the D.Va. Um, because it's very, it's not nichely situational. You can kind of use it everywhere. Um, but on top of that as well, I think Hello. teams have been more comfortable playing against a Sombra. They've been really, they've been way better about responding to it, like playing together like we saw from Boston. Go on, make the jump. Do it. Go on, punk. Five, Woo! Three, there you go. <laughs> One, nice. Uh, punk looking great. Right on top of Mundan. Not sure if there's any practical use of uh, being up there, from scouting, maybe hitting a couple of right clicks on the spawn doors, but... Maybe scouting yeah, and like maybe looking like a juicy target for a, a Widowmaker snipe and then bubbling right away. Yeah, bubble in it, get some uh, for a free charge, yeah, I guess so. All right, so no Sombra. Okay, Justice, let's go. This is going to be the complete mirror. Oh, Krillin's dead. Unlucky. I'm always thinking, maybe if Krillin had a greater mullet, he might survive some of these dives, but uh, yeah, that's uh, yet to be seen. See, it does end up going down two. A little bit of a four on four here, as the Justice do pressure the point. They're gonna get a free tick out of this? Looks like it, yep. yeah, all right. Opener gets a free tick out of this exchange. Like a two? Looks like Kalios is gonna be kind of chilling there as well. There is two ticks now. All right, Boss Knight Rising do need to respond in some way, somehow, but Crimson ends up going down to a right click from Kalios. Uh, Boss Knight Rising probably want to back off at this point because, uh, yeah, they got nothing left. And there you go, bam. There you get point eight. That was rather quick, rather okay. concise. Okay, sure. I mean, it started with a trade. How did it end up like this? Uh, uh, Boston just gave a lot of space over to the Justice. They got two ticks and then all of a sudden people went down and they have point A. That, there's my summary. There's my there summary is. of what happened. It's good. I like it, that. There's no ults online, though, for this next fight. And so Washington can feel pretty safe about trying to push up and trying to create this crossfire. You'll see Kalios and Assassin making that with the rest of the team behind them pushing the cart. Taking that high ground is, is really good because, like, look at the disruptor shots, like, forcing people forward, splitting them up from the team. That was nice. Seek is like super far in the front line though, but look at this pincer attack for the Washington Justice right now. And it looks like Boss Knight Rising gonna try and respond to it with a window. Ooh, nice shots from Crimso. Jesus. That was nice. Through the window, takes two. Justice is gonna get halted at this choke point. That's the ideal situation, right, Rose? You wanna yep. be able to stop that attacking team. Uh, in this choke point, way easier for Punk to do damage, easy grab targets, etc., etc. Even the lamp getting a lot more value too if you can hide it around a corner. Exactly. That, that's why I think the streets phase of King's Row is just so fun for this comp because 
you do have the natural architecture to be able to keep Ready that immortality field safer. Otherwise, you have to overextend to try to hit it, but uh, that, oh. there's a grab. Where, where's the grab go? Eat it to the back line, but once again, yeah, the lamp comes out. They do end up killing Victoria, was stuck in that grab, and here comes the counter grab. The boss not rising, we already used their B, and the Justice using one a little bit later. Yeah, that overheld hit every single member of Washington. Yeah, that sees them through the fight quite easily. Boss Knight Rising don't end up expending either of their DPS ultimates, so they got those to come back in. But uh, yeah, a little bit disconjointed there. It felt like from the uprising, just kind of walking onto that payload. Kalios hits up with a free grab. Yeah, it was so weird how that happened. I feel like Kalios was so far away to even be able to this get to the grab, now. but uh, DPS ults versus DPS ults here. Oh, wow. That headshot hit, but it didn't actually kill. He must have been a sub-85 charge there. Otherwise, Assassin would have got insta popped. But it's all good. Follow ups there. Yeah, that's what counts. Someone stuck in the subway without their Oyster card, looks like. You can get the coppers chasing after you. There you go. The copper being Crimzo in that situation. Boss not rising. End up uh, stopping the payload once again. It was a very nice use of the ult, actually, from Seeker. They used it on the approach there. So Justice had to kind of split. They didn't want to get insta kill. Exactly. I think I, I, I like looking at Overclock on the defense just a little bit more. Just when you are already set up and, and you can use it to kind of push the attacking team back, but now it's Decay's turn and you can also use it as a zoning ult here. Wow, yeah, Crimson using the window rather readily once oh. again. Oh, Victoria! Man, he's got some back down to the earth straight into a grave. Washington Justice is going to be able to clean this fight up with ease. These windows from Crimzo, it's like a give or take at this point, especially on a corner like that with the enemy team so close. You almost kind of call for them to just run through it and then kill you, right? I mean, that's yeah. uh, a big problem. Ideally, you want to use a window like super far away, but it would have been a nice one from Crimzo if he gets the instant one tap with the help of Seeker. Didn't end up happening, and the Washington Justice are able to cap that second point from time spare. Three and a half minutes on the clock now for Justice. That's a lot of time to work with, and, and I don't know if they're going to need it, though. I mean, Kalios has the grab ready to go. This time, hopefully, not just eating and praying into the back line and actually having Look some follow-up. Look at this. Follow Kalios. Yeah. He's Trying looking for the eat and pray. <laughs> I mean, he did it last time. Uh, let's be real. Oh, grab comes out. Punk already used one of those bubbles. That lamp perfectly placed, but it ends up going down anyway. Nice focus fire from the Washington Justice as they... Just fly through the window. Yeah, it's pretty good. Grab window. It's a, it's a good combination. Take that into your rank games for free. They do end up losing both supports here, so they haven't got any sustain on the point apart from the little bit of healing that the point provides. So a little bit of free real estate and then backing off slowly, I can imagine, is going to be the uh, course of action. Here. Yeah, you don't want to get staggered here. You still have a lot of time to work with, but like, don't, don't play around with it, you know? Uh, now that at least Opener is going to be back, you can taxi fast. The, the rest of the members that need to come in for the attack here. But uh, grab first. The beat comes out, and Assassin pulls the blade too. Can he get anything done with it? There's another beat on the side of the Boston Uprisings, and they also lay down that lamp. So Assassin's Blade, rather dull. And now Seeker follows this one up. A little bit more of a free ultimate now, as there's no support abilities from the Justice. He's getting damage down, but no headshots and no insta kills from Seeker just yet. So again, more of a stalemate fight. Boston still have more in their tank, though, as they pull the blade. And now Kalios gets focused down. He had no bubbles to spare. Open a kill. Seeker, but it shouldn't matter. With two minutes to go, the Justice still in um, a fairly decent position here, pushing on to the third point. They still have plenty of time. It's really just about playing the eco push, and they did just that. Boston now emptied the tank, and so Washington can come back into this one with the overclock to try to push Boston back and provide some space for Kalios and Krillin to work with, and then get those ultimates online. There was also a rather docile defense there for the uprising. They almost instantly back off and Seeker hits a nice body shot on Krillin. Decay trying to make a hero play, but it wasn't to be. Maybe Kalios will be the hero that the Washington Justice need, though, as he takes down Punk. Frontline annihilated for the Boston Uprising, but they're still standing strong. The Justice have to back up once again as they lose their two primary damage dealers in Assassin and Decay, but at least they've got a Graviton Surge for this next push. Yeah, and Kalios was able to get away with his life, so he still has that charge he accumulated in that last fight to his name. And so going into this Graviton, you're going to feel a lot better knowing that you still have like 50% charge. Oh my god, it's going oh. up! Cheeky Graviton Surge on the high ground there. Punk managed to get a bubble quickly off onto Faith, but it 
is uh, little to no success as the lap is a bit awkward to throw up there too if you're Primzo. Very cheeky from Kalios. They do end up tinkling the Boston Uprising with three members on the cart. Boston might not have a say into this fight, although they do have a Lucio and a Grav, so it should be good. But look at these four positions just as a holding. Yeah, and look, the window's going to go right onto the spawn too. Oh, nice little grab. Can they call Kalios? The lamb's been thrown out. Krillu just pumping Kalios full of heels. He manages to escape with his life. The payload a couple of meters before it reaches the final checkpoint as the Boston Uprising managed to force themselves out of the spawn doors. But now they have to deal with a beat and a blade from the Justice. Punk, Seeker, dead. Blade is pulled, but the payload is pushed in. The Justice end up finishing with time. 12 seconds to be exact. The Boston Uprising with a stellar defense, though. Yeah, super, super beautiful. I mean, especially after Washington Justice captured that first point in just seconds, Boston had to contend with a pretty sizable time bank over five minutes for second point, and then that three and a half entering into third. So the fact that they were even able to whittle that down to 12 seconds is incredibly impressive. A lot of that was just off the back of some smart positioning and being able to rely on those immortality fields from Crimso and the speed from Faith to help micro position the team. Boston playing way better together as a unit right now, and that defense is evidence of that. Yeah, on top of that point, Rose, too, the... For what we bring, oh, the cheeky grab. Oh, yeah. Love one of these bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, imagine if you're Crimzo in that situation. How the hell do you lamp that? Like, you have like to... where do you hit it? You have to hit it, there like... There you go. Yeah, like, it hits you, it on, like, the... You hit it on the wall, You have to but, like, hit it, it on the ceiling to then bounce down onto the box, or, like, you have to hit it, like, on the pipe so then it bounces onto the... Like, that is such a hard... That's uh, too much geometry. To I, don't, exactly. I don't like that. Uh, geometry, exactly. tri trigonometry. One of the All maths the that I didn't do well in, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I did advanced math at university, and uh, they basically gave us the answers uh, to the exam. It was pretty epic. Oh, wow. Probably shouldn't Lucky have. That's you. <laughs> that definitely is not how it was supposed to go, but it did. Uh, well, um, I mean, sometimes. There you go, I passed. Yeah, well, so. well, at least you have a calculator, right? Hopefully they gave not you a calculator. Don't use my degree now, am I? No. <laughs> how, about, how about them apples? Not putting my ranked games. <laughs> All right, Justice. Let's have a look what they got, Rose, because they're actually running Assassin on the Sombra again on his defense. I quite yeah. like on the defense. He's in Yada too. Nah, health packs away, but the problem is, look at how, uh, yeah, the focus. <laughs> the focus from Kalios uh, onto Kalios. Not much I, you can really do about that. There's very little kind of brawling potential with this area. You're so heavily reliant on the lamp to kind of save in there, and Open is running the, uh, running the Ana, not the Batiste. Up, I, I'm pretty sure that Victoria going after Opener actually deflected back a sleep dart at Krillin and then like killed him. I'm like a, I'm like pretty positive that 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 happened, and so you know you talk about some of the risks. I, there's one of them, you <laughs> Genshi in your face. Not always safe for the Ana to go for those tools that would protect that backline because it might just come right back at you. Washington aren't going to switch off of this yet though. Jaws, they're really confident in Assassin being able to get these EMPs online. So let's see what they got. I mean, uh, hey, for what it's worth, Decay is already almost to a pulse. That's pretty cool. Just Decay things, I suppose. All right, yeah, good Kalios there, protecting his backline, but he's got no bubbles now. Whoa, okay, yep. Just kind of dominated. Beautiful sleep there from Opener. Decay doing Decay things, maybe? Oh, he sends Seeker super low, has to get through the bubbles. No, Punk was the savior of that fight. My word, bubbles placed perfectly from Punk. Decay almost had his way with the rest of the team. That sleep from Opener was absolutely beautiful too. He slept Crimzo as he was mid-jump, so his body like flung out of the immortality. Yeah, well, I mean, looking at Punk at just absolutely chasing down the back line here. Zen and Ana, unfortunately, just don't stand a chance. And then the bubble onto Seeker to stop Decay from cleaning up that last 30 HP. Super big, very nice reactions there for Punk to be able to focus on trying to make sure that space is being made, but also just keeping the team safe. All right, what can they do? I mean, the EMP is available from Assassin. He could break the window if he really wants to. He's trying to ping out Faith. He manages to get the EMP off and the target is Faith. But look at that instantly, Crimson reacts. A beautiful lap to keep Faith alive and in the fight. Plus, is able to build up to a beat now. Seeker with the railgun. They've got beat. The Justice have to survive this transcendence. 
with the Transcendence, but now they have to deal with Punk's grab. Like, this seems such an unwinnable situation if you're the Justice right now. Graviton Surge comes out, Decay ends up going down, Kalios is nowhere to be seen, and the Washington Justice give up that second point. And now are they gonna change, is my question. Looks like yeah. they're going to. Yeah, there's a, there's a soldier in at least from Decay, Assassin switching right, over to the Genji. Go. I mean, hey, at least they used the EMP, they were looking for a target, but Punk's bubbles were just better. I'm pretty sure the bubble onto Faith stopped that EMP from connecting. And then the Immortality Field follow-up in terms of as well. You're gonna have both of your supports alive, and what more could you really ask for in that situation to capture that second point? Kalos is coming back with a grab, though. Oh, a decent grab, okay, on the payload. Victoria saved by the lamp again. Crimso's lamps have been so good. And there's the blade. Victoria just on cheats it. That's the justice falling on this defense. I mean, maybe they get another touch, but they got no ult to do it with, and Crimso could just put up a good old-fashioned window. Look at this time bank. Uprising hit him with speed run real quick. Don't mind if I do. Maybe the Lucio gets out. Nope. Punk with the body block. Oh, my word. Boston Uprising gain 50 seconds on their attack. Four minutes and 50 seconds for the next one. What an absolute speed run. Justice pretty happy in this moment that they finished with initiating <laughs> 12 seconds. Like yeah, literally guess, anything. Yeah. Literally yeah. anything is better than nothing in this situation because if you had to try to defend for four minutes for a single third of the pie, I don't like the odds on that one. I just I just think these teams are too evenly matched for ultimates to not come into the equation for two cycles and not net Boston some capture cards. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, at least a minute gives you something to work with here. And we have seen teams take a minute and turn it into a mile on maps like this in, in extra rounds. So Washington, they, they got their work cut out for them, but it's not impossible. They just... It isn't, yeah, okay. It's not pace. impossible. <laughs> winnable. Everything's winnable. Are winnable, right? Winnable. Oh, and that's what you tell yourself in Q, but you know the mental of your uh, fellow solo Q players are dropping rapidly. Yeah, descending yeah. Well, into the at least this place. isn't solo queue, okay? It's Real. not solo queue. These are teammates. Base. Their lives are not quite on the line just yet, but, you know, they still feel the pressure. And so Washington just going to stick to what has netted them some success so far in this match, and, and that's going to be the more meta composition of that Genji and that Soldier. So Opener at least can turn on that Song of Speed and try to get the pass to Andada and try to contest Boston from the high ground. But Washington did have that fast first take. Oh, good That'll pick. help. Right, yeah. Those Cheerios landing straight and true there on Victoria's skull. And they're all now dropped in this uh, small little corridor. I was, if I was this assassin there, probably would have dashed through and instantly died. But uh, that's why he's a pro, not me. However, Crimso bites back there. Decay ends up going down, and uh, a tick has been given over to the Washington Justice, but the Boston Art Rising put him in an awkward situation, Rose. It took so long for them to kind of re-engage into this fight that now it is final fight territory. Opener is dead. It's going to be a neutral one, too, as there is no ults online. The Justice managed to get the recontest, and that Victoria goes down. Is now it is just Kalios on the point. The lamp comes out to save Punk and Seeker as he now fights back at Decay once again. Decay has gone down twice now in this fight. An easy window for Crimzo as two ticks have been acquired by the Justice, but that looks just about it. A return window this time on Krillin's side, but instantly grabbed behind it. Crimzo doing his best job at keeping Punk alive, but it's actually not enough. But Crimzo to the rescue. Every single member of the Uprising having hero moments right now. King's Row defending on point A, 87%. Justice. You've got a hard, hard round uh, coming up. You have to get down with four and a half minutes. No, sorry. Almost five, five minutes. Almost four minutes five. and 50 seconds. Uh, yeah. it, it's going to be match. it's gonna be tough. Let's be real. That's at least five, six fights. <laughs> so. that's, that's why it's good that Washington were even able to walk away with 87%. That still buys them some time if they need to step off the point for a little bit, try to get back in and contest. Like if they get wiped super fast, they can come in and maybe get that last second contestant, you know? But otherwise, yeah, this defense has got to be flawless and it, it's got to be super tight and concise. 
that's going to be a tough ask when alts start coming online. You know, uh, you only have one sound barrier. You only have immortality fields every 20 seconds. So how do you really try to save those resources for those perfect moments? And yeah, when Seeker, oh, what, what a play Seeker made to be able to shut down that attack push too. A great response there from Boston. Oh yeah. Facing the down, what Washington dished out to them the first time. I mean, to put it into perspective as well, Rose, this four minute and 50 seconds, the fifth fastest attack on King's row of all time was just set by the Boston Uprising. And yeah, now like the Justice mad. on the receiving end of it. Um, we'll see what they can do. Seeker switch over to the Widow just for a free pick. Doesn't find anybody. Justice a little bit more. Uh, oh, now Victoria's on Widowmaker. A little Widowmaker <laughs> roulette, maybe? They do. Oh, okay, bad yeah, we've, we've, seen, okay. we've seen teams do this. It's like, hang on. And it's kind of smart because you don't really expect there to be a second Widowmaker that keeps its head. That's, that is right? true, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so maybe maybe you do find somebody a, a caught off guard there, but no. <laughs> Just kind of got to go back to the basics here. And, and this is really where the going starts to get tough here for Washington. Oh, the backline's already isolated. Please help Krillin. No, but you got to help him, man. Hey, that entire time. He was fighting Genji. Oh, well, I mean, uh, you do end up trading uh, quite no. favorably in your DPS, but with Kalios and Krillin dead, only opener to heal. The boss not rising using speed boost. Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. The justice. It was going to be a hard time bank regardless. Maybe they get another retouch here. Opener's only just spawning now. He is a Lucio. Can get back to the point in time, but it's the trickling of the boss not rising. Oh, sorry. The Washington Justice members onto the point that's going to keep this one alive, but no. Nope. It's not to be the Boston Uprising now sitting at match point against the Justice, keeping their play-ins hopes alive. Whew. Extra rounds there for King's Row. What else were we kind of expecting in a situation like this where this is it? This is it, Jaws. If Washington don't come back from this one, uh, that that's it. That's their season. So, whew. Boston, Boston, You don't want to go down in play-ins 0-6 is all I'm saying. Need some of that clutch factor from Decay right now if you're a Washington Justice fan. Look, the Sombra comp didn't really work out too well. Boston Uprising setting the fifth fastest record on attack on Kings of all time. Oh, it's rough. It is rough. Back up against the wall for the Washington Justice. That gavel not quite striking the mark just yet. We're going to jump to a break. We'll see if Justice can hit him on a reverse sweep after this.
Three for three is back for every three hours watched, earn three owl skins and an additional reward featuring new community design at Watch 2 Cosmetics. They are pretty sick, go check them out. Some uh, beautiful artists out there in the community have uh, made some cool cosmetics for us. The player card looks sick, you can see it in the top right corner now. Uh, tune in to the Overwatch League playoffs and grand finals from October 30th through November 4th to earn your rewards. And a shout out to our incredible community artists for their designs. Yeah, it includes uh, Kiriko too, so that's uh, pretty sick. Pretty sick stuff. All right, speaking of sick stuff, especially if you're a Boston fan, 2-0 uh, right now. Rose, uh, hopes and dreams for playoffs. They're still alive. They're in the play-in still. They still need to win here and win against Toronto to find later on today. But let's talk about that King's Row real fast. That was fast. Uh, four minutes and nine seconds after the additional like time swaps here and there um, was the fifth fastest time for 2022, which is kind of wild in of itself. Uh, the Justice, again, tried to spice things up with their Sombra Cop Rose, but it just didn't end up finding any success. I think, uh, again, teams have just gotten really, really good about playing around the Sombra. Uh, and it's unfortunate because towards the beginning of the stage, Washington's Sombra Tracer comp was just busted. Like, they were knocking down some pretty hefty doors with that composition. And, and to oh, see yeah. it, I think, lose out on that potency is really unfortunate. Like, they beat San Francisco Shock, okay? <laughs> like, this is a... This is an obvious strategy that has been tried and true for this team. It's just like, I think, been there, done that for a lot of teams. Like, they've fallen victim to it. They've been on the dishing out end of things, playing the Sombra, and teams have just really figured out how to play against it. So for Washington, I love this choice of Circuit Royale. If you're gonna put your faith in anything right now, it's going to be that Sojourn Genji composition. And so you're hoping that after the performances we've seen from Decay's Sojourn on Circuit Royale this season, that this is it. This is the comeback that Washington Justice need right now. Oh, then yeah, they need some sort of clutch right now because yeah, the two zero down, so not great. Not the best position to be in, being real. I'm just keeping it real, keeping it 100. Damn, my brain. You can tell how much uh, Solo Kid we're playing. It's uh, turning to mush. It's beautiful. That was so beautiful. Beautiful opener, I love it. 
<laughs> I love it. I, it's, it's amazing that wow. you're, you, he's that accurate with the orbs onto the piano, too. Like, that's hard. <gasps> no, oh. no, no. Oh. Don't go to him. Oh, no. Okay, okay. He's got deflect. He's got no, deflect. He oh, my God. <laughs> he went for the right click there, too. If he was right on top of his head, that would have been an instant kill. That would not have been great. Oh, Kalios. He's alone. No, no, Does he no, use lap? He probably him. should lap. Oh, no. Oh, oh tragedy. He's like, walked right out balls. of it. Oh, well, I mean, I think it went down and then he died, which is, uh, yeah, it does have a deploy time. Don't forget the amount of times I've accidentally uh, died because I forget it has a deploy time is too many times to count, to be honest. Well, nice little listen, forward hold there. It worked, Boston. though. The Washington are out. They're out of spawn. True. They're, they're good. The cart's rolling. Okay. Let's, let's look what at it. What is Victoria doing? Cosplaying as a plant in the corner. <laughs> okay, he's back, everybody. And Kate instantly dies. Wow. All righty. Right, there's the lamp. It's on the corner. Problem is, Krillin is alone. He's got his exo boots to kind of navigate himself around the map. They do end up killing Crimso, but look at Victoria. He's just popping off right now. Go on, son. Victoria just cleaning house, taking name numbers and their wallets. My word. They're going to have to back off, though, still, because uh, they did end up losing Crimzo, but <laughs> look at Victoria's ult charge compared to Assassin's. He's almost got Blade. You've called Victoria a plant, so I now deem him a saw palmetto. He's a carnivorous plant. He's a saw palmetto. Excuse me. He has a blade, and oh. it's sharp. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, Whoa. nah. It, uh, okay. but pitch your plant works, too. I have been a spy trap. I'll have to yeah, ask that cat planet about those. All right, he's got the blade. Do they know? They probably should do. Ooh, nice deflect damage. Straight back at Decay. They might not even need the blade. No, they do not. Open or assassin Decay instantly. Melt is the justice of forced back to spawn. At least in this situation, if you look at the silver lining of things, he built up a very quick blade, so they might get ult on time, they being the justice. They do want to take it down Victoria, though. Beam damage going through that deflect finishes him off. But everybody is so split up right now. It's all about this focus fire. Yep, looks like Justice are going to regain control of this portion of the map. There being their sport. Hopefully the payload in a couple of seconds. All ults online for the Justice in a couple of moments. Okay, nice job, Justice. That was really good focus fire. And I know they were split up, but they did get the job done. A little bit of a taxi there to make sure that Krillin has the sight lines onto the front line before they start to round this corner. But Boston will jump down. Oh, oh, oh. oh no. yeah. Okay, oh, Faith wait. jumped into that one. Uh, that was a free grab there uh, by Kialios. There's the blade pull from Victoria. He's at it for a long time at this point. Can he get any damage done? He's actually trapped in the small room. 60 HP, too afraid to peek. An assassin and decay have already cleaned up the boss and uprising. That early advantage of uh, a blade just not coming to fruition for the boss and uprising. They do end up forcing Justice to use everything they have, but boss and uprising on the same uh, in the same fight also used everything. So it's not the worst. I guess Crimzo's got a window coming up. But that's just about it. Taking this high ground is imperative now for the Justice. What an ult fiesta, though. Like, they didn't have to use all of those ults, but, like, the grab whiffed from Kalios. Faith sound barriered into the grab. That didn't hit anybody else. I, I mean, I, it was just a lot. So... Look at this aggression. 100 energy. Oh, Snipe Seeker, but only hits him in the body, so no instant kill. Here's another window from Karimzo, supplementing that healing and damage. Oh, Assassin, you tried. You tried. Ain't gonna happen, though. Karimzo's got uh, senses sharper than a hammerhead. There you go. Two minutes and 45 seconds to go. As now, boss not rising. Yep, doing the same old thing. It's the spawn camp time, making that payload just inch further and further back. I mean, you may as well. And Boston, at this point, are, are really looking at trying to keep their resources. A couple of people made it out of spawn, so Boston are going to start to turn their attention towards them. But just like that, I mean, when you don't have the backup for the rest of your team, you've got sharpshooters like Victoria and Seeker that are like actually just heat-seeking missiles at this point. Uh, those are going to be some pretty quick takedowns. Kalios as well, even though the first one gets thrown in there is just... Oh, nice punk what? gift, though. Nice. Punk actually got grabbed on the high ground there. The Justice are going to be able to make their way out of spawn. Wow. That was a nice bloody block initially from Punk, just stopping Kalios from getting back to the rest of his team, but he took way too long to kill and ends up gaining a grab and then using it on Punk. Alrighty. 
Just as right at their spawn, they're gonna have to gain control of the cart again and push it back up to where it was. Does give Boston Uprising a f that was basically a free fight, and you force out grab. That's a, a net win for them overall. It is. I don't know if they were really expecting the grab to be online from that either. And the best part about the grab is that it bunched everybody up. That Assassin and K now get to cycle through with their alls. Nice play. Lot of that damage blocked by the lap, but Opener got Ajax. Oh, Seeker snipes him out of midair. Opener can't lay down the beat. And that's their hopes and dreams, at least in this fight. Snuffed out. One minute and 20 seconds to go. The Justice have three ultimates online, but they still have to deal with that punk grab. And now they've only got a lap to try to deal with. Wait. Oh, Blade from Victoria yeah. too. I mean, <laughs> like, you're like, okay, I need oh, to use man. it up the hill to get the shortest distance possible. And now oh, the oh, tragedy, oh, honestly. Such tragedy. a bummer. I mean, like, Sometimes you just can't predict when that soldier is going to have that charged up shot ready to snipe you, though, either. And, like, oh. I, I would rather see Opener try to use it than not, but, oh, grabbing the stairwell. Oh, Australia's gift to esports, everybody. It's pure BM. Pure BM. I would expect That's nothing not more. not even BM. That was just, like, a nice opportunity that Punk saw and took. But, like, that, they got to... Okay, great group. It's fine. Justice still have... 25 seconds. Assassin and Decay, they get to use their ults here. I mean, maybe you get to, to kind of do the same thing if Faith tries to go for the sound barrier. Decay pops the overclock and then Assassin goes in. But you gotta be clinical here. Justice, come on. Keep oh, yourself in place. this. Okay, that was perfect. They didn't go in too deep. Assassin gets out, he forces the beats, and now Decay can go crazy. He is still on low ground though, so he doesn't really have an angle to shoot from. Assassin manages to find the kill onto Punk and actually gets a reset onto Crimzo. Decay, with only one kill with his overclock, will do. More of a distraction tool than anything else. Not layering the DPS ults there was perfect for the Washington Justice. If we had to get these cleanup kills, but as long as they don't lose anybody in the process, they might be good to put this payload in. Yes, just big staggers here on the Boston Uprising side. I'm not sure Faith is going to be able to get the kill on Assassin there. He's going to have to rejoin the rest of his team, but Punk is actually already back. A Graviton Surge is three. The lap instantly dealt with perfect focus fire from the Justice. And they're keeping themselves in this map just by the skin of their teeth. Checkpoint B unlocked. Whew. There's the clutch factor. Let's go, Justice. They know how important this map is. This is going to keep their chances alive. Huge stagger here onto Seeker. Buys them some time to get this cart a little bit further into this final point. But they only had one and a half minutes added, and they're going to have to use everything that they've got here. Not much left in the tank either after using the DPS alts and the grav, just a team fight to go. So you're looking at Krillin using this amplification matrix, trying to pump up some of that extra damage. Assassin actually uh, pretty close to another Dragon Blade here after being able to get those staggers and all that damage. Man, I love uh, them checking Victoria there. They must know he's near to that blade. Faith ends up going down. What could only be assumed was a big right click or, or something from uh, Kalios. All right, just force Boston not rising to back all the way up. Decay almost gets one pop there. Not great, not great. And now it's all about a little bit of Flover Watch. Uh oh. Well, uh, maybe not so much anymore. Opener has to use the speed for this grab. This blade has to just be kited away from. There will be a beat actually coming out fairly early. The Graviton Surge does end up landing. And in fact, the lamp is going to help them sustain through this. Punk is still 100 energy, mind you, though. Whenever he's trapped in this small corridor, Kalios right clicking to try and save himself and the rest of the team by just outputting enough damage as possible. But it's not going to be. The Justice still have the blade in their back pocket with the 10 seconds to go. I'm not sure there's anybody there to really touch. And even with that, you have a window and a blade and even a beat maybe from Faith to kind of uh, stop all this from happening. A double dash from Assassin using the blade reset to get onto that point. And even a blade from Victoria, just playing goalkeeper, cuts down opener. It's Kalios, and then maybe Decay gets on, and then maybe Krillin too. But this is where the Justice will get held, just on this final corner. To be fair, uh, with you, Rose, not the worst thing in the world, considering they were almost stopped on that hill on second point. But now the Boston Uprising rising with a clear goal in their sights. Knocking Justice out here would be perfect restore some of that confidence, move on in the play-ins. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when Boston Uprising, the last time they faced the Justice, lost 3-2. It was a close five-map series. So, 
you know Boston are looking for some revenge, looking to keep themselves in this play in contention. But it does kind of start and end here. Can they get to that line? I mean, uh, Justice still, like, they, they did they did use their borrowed time to the do its fullest potential there, Jack. That's for sure. All right. No funny business from the no Justice. Sombra. No Sombra. No funny hero. Uh, Let's see if they're doing a spawn hold. I can't, yeah, I was going to say, I can't imagine they wouldn't. It makes the most sense. I like uh, spawn holding with this comp too. Um, the amount of like sustainability you have and the ability to speed boost is, is really nice. Just don't split up too much and you're all good. Plus you can, if you're decay in this situation too, you can sit quite far back, which is quite nice. We yet to see like a kind of a small little widow counter. Sometimes you do that. If they're holding to the spawn doors. Yeah. One team, your, your whole team goes one way. You go the other as widow maker, snipe somebody. But with how fast people are in this comp and, if, and even movement abilities, it's a little bit more difficult for widow to get a shot off and uh, insta kill somebody. But there are god gamer aimers out there. Oh wow, Alios instantly burnt down. Seeker hitting with a large railgun shot forced the bubble, and the bubble was instantly burst. And that will be the spawn hold pretty much over. Yeah, there you go. That was rather fast from the Uprising. Yeah, something that Victoria actually did really nice there was just dash all the way to the back to try to get access to Krill in an opener. And when that happens, I mean, what do you do as the Baptiste except to try to turn your attention towards the Genji that's just peppering shurikens into the back of your skull? So if that's the case, then you don't necessarily have the same type of sustain and Boston are also doing a great job, too, of just taking Kalios offline. They're just focus firing him constantly. Uh, okay. Well, before he dies. Alrighty. Look like a little small solo kill there from Assassin. Maybe no healing. Maybe no healing. Not the worst point to stop this offense either. Trying kind to of just uh, juggle this high ground, just put up towards some of these ultimates. Any small slagger is nice, especially if you're on defense. And we were able to use that window on the corner, which is going to be up in just a moment. They're just kind of looking for those dashes. Those bubbles are back off cooldown. Just a fraction of a second too late there for Crimzo hitting that shift to heal up Punk. All right, the Justice looking alive. They're playing slash playoff hopes. It really was the Not to win just yet. They've got to keep themselves in this series, and they're doing a good job of it thus far. Two minutes to go, Rose. Two minutes to go. They're going to back Not off and pay some respects there to Boston to let them get around that corner as they also set up to start using their own ultimate. So Washington there, too, get into a nice position to be able to use this amplification matrix for the entire team. And if necessary, they're going to have a lot of other ults to back that up, Ooh. too, but I don't think they need it now. Yeah, probably not, no. That was a nice shot from Takei using that power slide. It's an achievement as well if you uh, manage to find a headshot with the right click to manage your power slide. All right, the Washington just have a couple of DPS ults plus that Graviton Surge. Just it. That's how much impact Soja can really have. Like, just getting one headshot is more than enough to stop the other team from doing much. Look, he's still trying to hunt. He knows Seek is coming back from spawn and has to walk down that long stretch. Ooh, nice reaction time there from Kalios with the bubble to save Decay. Double grab, double beat, double lap. The assassin's still in the back. Crimso is getting harassed, but the rest of his team are getting pushed all the way back, so he's on an island, isolated completely alone. Sika takes care of him. And now the Justice, down two members, have to back all the way up. If they manage to get out alive here, they might be able to set themselves up in a priority position, but they know they're going to lose this first checkpoint unless Opener commits his whole self and more to that point. But it's not going to happen, no. They'd rather take a more... Uh, a more favorable fight on this high ground position here. However, I say that. There's the blade. Oh, Seeker, he's in trouble. Yeah, saved by the lab. Crimzo once again, rather quick with the timing. And Victoria takes out Assassin mid blade. A snipe from Seeker, a rather low energy one, but he still managed to make it work. Three minutes for the boss not rising. As it's setting quite a nice pace, at least on this second point, dismantling, deconstructing Justice's defense on this high ground. The defense has been good from Justice so far, but I feel like as time goes on, Boston are just getting better and better at being able to figure them out. And so look at the forward hold Boston are taking, all the poke damage coming Washington Justice's way as well, just in hopes that they're gonna force out some of these valuable cooldowns like those Zarya bubbles, especially when Victoria wants to go in with this Dragon Blade. 
is the blade. The lamb gets thrown out super far. I think Victoria assumed Krillin was going to throw the lamp at his feet. He does end up getting taken down, but the blades in these scenarios, and you've seen it in the stats, they're not there for kills. They're there to force out abilities, force out ultimates, and that's exactly what it did. Just letting Seeker lay waste to the enemy team. And the Justice lose that second point. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go for the Uprising now, Rose. This is Justice final hope in keeping their hopes and dreams in playoffs and play-ins alive. They need to defend here. Well, the defense is going to have to come off of the back of Krillin's amplification matrix. When you're looking at contesting against Punk's Graviton Surge, you can use that amp uh, matrix to a little bit defensively, you know, kind of put it up as you get grabbed together. But do Justice even know that Punk has this online and is ready for it? This, this could be final fight here. Jack, this, this might be where Rush Justice it. fall. Krillin, forced to use that lamp. And now they've not really got much to use against this Graviton Surge. Faith traded for Assassinus Punk, just squares up once again. Kalios is in this small room alone. They can just grab Kalios. Kalios completely isolated from the rest of the team and can't even earn a grab before he gets taken down. The boss and Uprising now marching on forward. Krillin falls and the Justice are out. The boss and Uprising keeping themselves in the game, in the play-ins as they take down the Justice 3-0. What an unfortunate way there for the Justice to go out this season. Just so close towards that playoffs. But what a fight they put up here. Jaws, it's been a treat to watch them this season. And I know that they had bigger aspirations than this, but they have been, they've had to fight against adversity this season. And, and the five of them really have come together strong and have put up some great plays all season long but for Boston this was the first hurdle and now they get to go forward and look to their next goal taking down Toronto Defiant. Oh boy after the beating that they suffered yesterday at the hands of the mayhem you're thinking like coming into today uh, they might be a little bit down in the dumps but you just got to step back in brand new day brand new match brand new map right get back into this they were three, they were three owed yesterday in a, a devastating fashion, but they completely flipped the script here today. Three owing the Washington Justice on what seemed like quite an easy affair. I mean, especially on King's Row, getting a extraordinarily quick time. It feels like a, a reinvigorated Boston Uprising. It really does. I think that there's a lot of different players you could look at in terms of improvement. Today, Punk was able to show us why he's considered one of the best Zarya in the league right now. And that's just because of how reactive he was with his bubbles and also just how much pressure he was putting on to Kalios when it came to the Zarya versus Zarya, just kind of rushing at him when he had high energy and not afraid to just try to puncture the bubble and then go in and confirm the kill. I think that's the most important thing when it comes down to these Zarya's versus Zarya's is don't be afraid to shoot the bubble. Cause you, but just make sure you have the follow up, right? <laughs> don't give <laughs> yeah. them free charge. Just don't give them free energy. <laughs> well, speaking about energy, a man with lots of it stored under the hat, I would assume. Uh, player of the match is gonna be Crimzo today. Not seeing a lot of support players being player of the match, but Crimzo definitely deserves it here. His clutch in a section, in fact, on King's Robos, keeping them in on that first point with the Baptiste. Lamps have been perfectly timed when they're not kind of at weird angles up on high ground when someone gets grabbed. Uh, Crimzo's just been a superstar for the boss and uprising, someone that you want to just permanently have in the roster. And he's been paying off dividends for them. It really has, and this is another player that you can give a lot of credit for improvement to you from yesterday to today. Where, you know, before you were really looking at those immortality fields being forced out so early, but I feel like Crimson was able to really put his destiny in his own hands today with those immortality field timings, making sure that they were going to be able to save the team or himself if he really needed it. And then also where he put down those amplification matrices, not afraid to use them a bit more selfishly like on that king's row hold where he was able to clutch that out there for boston and stop that full point a capture on round three but this is just yeah. absurd numbers i mean a like that healing per 10 is just extraordinarily high yeah it is that was from this match too so almost looking at 12k 11 and a half k healing per 10 final blows looking great amp matrix assists also looking good yeah um using the window a little bit selfishly if you got the faith in yourself 
and the faith on your team. Like, at the end of the day, you can do anything as bat, right? You got lamp, you got shift, you, you end up going low. As long as you have good aim through the wind, though, you're outputting yep. tons of damage. And I mean, Crimson kind of proved it there. Um, him and Punk have just been such an asset to the roster. I think we were kind of uh, tossing it up in the break, too, if we want to give it to Punk as well. Or, like, not as well. It was, or, I mean, but yeah, um, like, maybe maybe ask. have, like, two players in the match. I think overall, Boston do need yeah. that maybe confidence boost after yesterday, as we've been talking about. But they definitely earned it today. And I hope that they can take this next little bit of time to regroup and just stay focused at what the goal is today. And that is to beat Toronto. Yeah, they've got one more opponent that's going to stand in their way of making the playoffs. They're going to have a small little break just before that match. But after this small break, we do have an interview with Crimzo. And uh, yeah, I want to hear his thoughts on that series because it must have been, especially after day number one of the play-ins, a rough time coming into today. But it looks like they've shored up super easy. You know, congratulations to them keeping their play-in dreams alive. It's going to be a tough mountain to climb over Toronto, though. We'll have to wait and see what his thoughts are with that series up coming after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Upper Deck, the official trading card of the Overwatch League, and by TeamSpeak the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back to Game Break, everybody. I'm here with Crimzo coming up from a great win today. 3-0 victory against the Washington Justice. Crimzo, I just want to start this off with by asking, you know, you guys look dominant today. Uh, you know, what gave you guys the edge today against the Washington Justice? Um, I think we just had time to kind of figure out what went wrong yesterday. And uh, we made some adjustments. Uh, we watched some of the, the game from yesterday uh, back and uh, I think we, we were able to uh, come up with like a solution to uh, help us into the matches today. Um, and I think we pulled it off to pretty good success. Um, and I'm excited to uh, go against Toronto next. Yeah, I mean, I want to I want to go in a little bit deeper uh, and ask you more about that because you know, obviously, yesterday you guys were going up against uh, you guys were up against Florida Mayhem, you know, and it was a devastating loss. You guys lost uh, three, I mean, 3 but like you said, you guys made those adjustments and you guys look dominant today. So, like, what what were some of the adjustments or what what sort of talks do you guys have like amongst yourselves coming into today's match? Um. I think it was mostly just kind of like nerves, maybe. Uh, we were like playing a little bit slower than we, we feel like we should have in the Florida game. And so like we just really came in today with like, you know, no regrets mindset. We're going to go in, we're going to play the game, we're going to do our best and then, you know, just leave it all on the table. And I think like just that, that the synchronization of their team to be able to do that together really like helped us go through today. All right. Okay. And... Last but not least, of course, you guys are going up uh, against the Toronto Defiant next uh, very soon. How confident are you that you guys could defeat the Toronto Defiant and finally go into the playoffs? Um, I mean, they're a really good team. I think uh, we, we've learned a lot uh, just this past day, you know. Um, and I think that we can definitely give them a run for their money. Uh, they're definitely a really strong team, like I said, but uh, I, I believe in our team and I think that we can definitely, you know, we have a chance for sure. All right, I definitely believe you guys have a chance too. All right, I'm gonna wrap up the interview here. Crimson, thank you so much for your time. And again, big congratulations on the win. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crimson. And that puts the Boston Uprising one step closer to joining us in Anaheim. Also, I love the cuddly no, 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 energy from no, Crimson no. because he has like the blankie, got like the neck <laughs> He's the most comfortable hand. player out He's there. He's so comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I bet he plays with his shoes off too. Oh yeah. yeah. Or, or he wears Ugg boots. No, Wait, or, or he wears Crocs. Everyone does that. No, I wear, I wear shoes. I play with shoes on. What? What? I yeah. think that's weird, what? Costa, by the way. Okay, but is it weirder <laughs> than the people who walk with bare feet across the stage? We saw well, some people walking on. bare feet. Someone? Bare feet? Who? Yeah, oh, I can't. I want to say it was an oh, Orlando so now player. you don't have evidence? Well, I, I, I will get evidence, okay? Uh, I will... I will... We'll, uh, yeah, we'll figure this out all together here. And now, Boston Uprising uh, looking very, very dominant. A very different team, a very different look from what we've seen yesterday from him. And uh, Crimson did just speak to adjustments uh, which were being made by the team. And that is a short turnaround to make. It's a big adjustment. Yeah, it, as he said, it was probably a lot of minute things that were just going wrong. They were getting isolated, playing too slowly, as he said. Nerves can definitely factor in when you have such... When you play mirror compositions, tempo is a very important thing. And it, yesterday, they just got absolutely overrun. We know how good Florida is at this meta, so that's not too surprising. But definitely look to be in better form against the Justice. Obviously, I have to talk it just a little bit. Washington, I'm not sure why they, what they saw in this Sombra composition, but they tried to pull it out in this series from time to time with very little success once again, which is disappointing. But in Washington Justice, they had a, a pretty good run, especially with so much of the turnover of their roster in this season. I'm very curious with them finally closing the page and the book on this season, what they will look like next season, because it feels like for me, this sort of felt like the last ride for this roster. So where will the Washington Justice end up next? But more importantly, there's a lot of great pieces on this roster. Where will they end up after this season? Yeah, I think uh, speaking more specifically about this match, you know, I, I think that they still made a decision to swap over to this Saria Genji sort of competition. We saw it, for example, uh, on the first map even um, on Ilios. We saw it come out here on the third point, and yesterday there was some, not something that they uh, chose at all. I mean, they picked Paraiso yesterday, didn't go with that map today. Instead, they went for King's Row, for example. Um, and so there were some changes from the Washington Justice from yesterday until today. And so I think they acknowledged that, like, hey, maybe we should move into this Saria composition but when it comes down to the execution, 
it was not quite there. You couldn't get the same efficiency with the graviton surges, the dragon blading, etc. So Washington Justice, you know, they gave it the good old college try. Good old fashioned no, the try. Good, the good, old, good old try here. Um, but I think you could see as well when you saw these mirror compositions. Boston Uprising, they've been playing this star composition for quite some time now. They looked very structured, the way they utilized the graviton surges, their ultimates. Um, Crimson had a good game because player of the match, of course. Whereas the Washington Justice, execution wasn't quite there. And I think you could tell that maybe they haven't practiced this composition as much as possible. Yeah, and as we say, goodbye to the Washington Justice in the 2022 season. We do want to thank the entire team for taking us on an emotional roller coaster throughout the season. I'm <laughs> ready been... to get off. <laughs> <laughs> but it was entertaining. You can't argue that. So thank you so much to the Washington Justice. We're looking forward to seeing you again next season. And as Boston and Toronto prepare for the final match, we did think it was a perfect time to catch you up on the season if you missed anything. So we proudly present the Overwatch season so far. Enjoy. The 2022 Overwatch League season has been absolutely jam-packed with action. With new heroes, new maps, new game modes, and new tournament champions, there's been tons of excitement all year long. With the finish line in sight, it's time to set the final stage with our recap of the season so far. The season got off to a hot start in May with qualifiers for our first tournament of the year, the Kickoff Clash. Teams came into the season revamped and revitalized for 5v5 play, a big shift from seasons prior. And these major changes to the game led to some stellar Overwatch play right from the get-go. As Tankvisor gets two, working for a little bit more. The rest of Chengdu Hunters vulnerable to Lee Jae Gong getting a triple boot, a quadruple for what? Oh my God. What is more satisfying oh. than that? I cannot name a single thing. Funny Astro with a little, with, with, with some big kills here in the feed. So. Yeah, Lastro or Funny Astro. They put a lot of heals out on him, the Nano Boost as well. Lip's gonna find one, two, three kills, looking for a little more, and he's gonna get all five members. Gets the ace. When the dust finally settled, we ended up with the final kickoff clash brackets for both East and West tournaments, where winners of each region were crowned. While the East region competed online, the teams in the West traveled down to Arlington, Texas to compete in front of a raucous crowd thanks to our generous hosts, the Dallas Fuel. With the first title of the year on the line, teams showed us their A-game. Ederson with a 5k! Profit is going off. He is finding damn near everything in the kill feed right now. What can you do when Profit is this good? Shoot with Shoot. another kill! How does he keep doing this? Fitz with the visor, he's looking for the 5k, and he is going to get it. Still a legitimate threat, forcing away the outlaws, but Pelican comes out of nowhere, millimeters away from what? victory, and they've done it! What am I watching? Zest answers back with one last kill, but the OT will bleed down ever so quickly. The Soul Dynasty will take this final 4-0. But the Gladiators are just tearing them apart! With a victorious war, the Gladiators extinguish the Fuel's flame and secure the Kickoff Clash title. After crowning our tournament champions in each region, we turn once again to qualifying play, but this time for our first global tournament of the year, the Mid-Season Madness. With a new stage came a new meta, heavily involving one of our new Overwatch 2 heroes, Sojourn. And oh boy, was that meta off the rails. Quite literally. Kai, who is this man? MN3, why did they feed him today? Is this the work of the cheesesteaks? No, 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 they don't know! Oh, honey! Uh, oh my god, oh, they were standing in a straight line! Meteor strike from the copy, but the outlaws find the cap! There's no way that just what? happened! They're gonna touch. There's a oh, move. no! Come on. You can't be so, serious! It's still blank, by the way, oh. because there's probably gonna be more. From there, it was time for the two regions to clash to crown the global mid-season madness champion. The teams from the West traveled once again to Hawaii to be able to compete against their colleagues from across the Pacific, as we were finally able to see who got first bragging rights, East or West. Nearly three minutes gone. Oh, what is that? Haven't even gotten to the bridge. Oh, <laughs> backbone. Neman 3 has a safe position to play from. Adamo falls, bullet between the shoulder blades. Cuts down Bernard, looks for a little bit more. He's going to get shy. He gets super rich. He gets absolutely everybody. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Did you? I am winched him. Dex, we need you to get us out of here. Everybody else piles in around him. They get the elimination shy once more. No, we can just throw it into that grab, but Dante's already dealt a lot of damage. A triple kill for the Doom. Aunt gets Violet. They get the kills. And suddenly it's just Kilo, the cleanup comes through. 
He's touch, touch. He's gonna touch! They can't do it! Unbelievable! The Gladiators take this series. Four to two in the end. They are your mid-season madness champions. The LA Gladiators are gonna go back to back. After a short break, teams were back at it again for the qualifiers for our third tournament, the Summer Showdown. We once again welcomed a new Overwatch 2 hero into the meta, Junker Queen. And we all look to answer the question, who is the Jote? Ooh, a takedown here, they might not even need it. Oh, that Rampager is huge. Crowley's gonna die to just the bleed. Oh, what a knife by Kellen. Uh, look at this guy go. Like five uh, kills, just like that in a blink of an eye. Today's the Titans day. They're gonna do it. The Vancouver Titans have done it. They found their first win in over a year. Then Dane following up, up on those kills and pushed all the way back to the spawn room again. With the qualifiers wrapped up, we headed into the summer showdown tournaments for each region. Where the East teams competed online once again, the West teams traveled to Toronto for the first ever Overwatch League event in Canada. We have eight of the very best teams in the Western region of the Overwatch League converge here in Toronto. He stays alive. The Rampage from Hardman hits four of the Shark, but Fuel barely have any damage. But it's Hardman who's a one-man army at the front. Takes one shot. Beat from Legion gone. Smurf goes down. Doesn't need the headshots. The bodies oh, are enough. But he June. uses one wow. for Shark and uses one for Vindame. Oh, Lip. Bob was deployed to the point, but Decay from Long. What? Oh, my. What? It cannot be serious, Decay. Ladies and gentlemen, look at him go! Whoa. They're doing so much with so little, I'll be honest with you. This is unreal! Bukilo and an unbelievable ult from Kalush. He hits four members of the Vancouver Titans, piling on the pressure. Four kills for the Junker Queen. The Dragons will wait no more. They continue to stand as kings of this meta. They will take Circuit Royale and claim themselves a stage final. And the House of the Dragons reign supreme. The Shanghai Dragons are your 2022 Summer Showdown champions. Here in the frigid north, it's all covers that Dallas Fuel extinguished the competition. Take a bow, your Summer Showdown champions. And Hanbin, I mean, he's made for the Junker Queen. And the Fuel are made for the throne. So, where are we now? Currently, we're in the final weeks of the qualifiers for the Countdown Cup, where teams are making their final push to make it to the postseason. The final playoff teams will be determined in the first portion of the postseason, the Countdown Cup players, where teams on the cusp will have their final shot at making the end of the year playoffs. These games are extremely important, as only eight of the 13 teams from the West and four of the seven teams from the East will make the trip to Anaheim for the 2022 playoffs. Once we have our final 12 teams, we'll have one last double elimination bracket to determine our 2022 Overwatch League champions. Bracket play with all 12 teams in the LAN environment will begin on October 30th and will culminate into the grand finals on November 4th. As we head into the most exciting stretch, of the 2022 Overwatch League season, there's never been a better time to check out some of the incredible Overwatch 2 gameplay at the highest level. Will a team with a tournament win already under their belt bring home the championship, or will an underdog make a bracket run? Will Kiriko, who enters the fray in time for the playoffs, make a big impact on the meta? Which players will make their mark in Overwatch League history? Stay tuned to everything Overwatch League to keep up with the action and see how our fifth season concludes. That's right. If that doesn't get you hyped, I don't know what will. Jaws asking the right questions here. <laughs> what was the question? Sorry. Oh, you didn't listen. Uh, well, I, well, I, 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 sorry, Jaws started talking yeah. and I tuned out. Sorry, yeah. I just heard that wrong. Right. That, 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 really, <laughs> that was a really good recap. I, I like, completely forgot awesome. we had so many. Yeah, I was like, oh, we had that, right? We're like, oh, like, that, yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the maple syrup thingy, the chicken. Yeah, yeah. That's the... It was awful. Yeah, it, it was exactly as bad as you can imagine. Made me gas. I wasn't that bad. Can I ask you a question? What do you mean it wasn't that bad? You didn't do it. It wasn't so bad for you. Did you guys be honest? Did you guys no. water down the no. syrup? We, we didn't. Uh, we, oh, it? No, it, it wasn't watered down. It was definitely a very liquidy syrup, oh. but it was it wasn't watered down. We had a big it one. Be a temperature that thing too. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, it was top shelf, of course. <laughs> <laughs> top shelf 
uh, maple syrup. Grade A. All nice. Right. That's, that's right. Only the best of the best. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, we do have our next match coming up, and that one will determine the last available ticket for Anaheim. You didn't enjoy my transition there? No, because uh, because I, I just I just comp I, I just visually in my head I compare these two teams to really good syrup. Now that's just. <laughs> The comparison you made. Yeah. Yeah, Toronto. Yeah, uh, let syrup, us know what you uh, think. Toronto, is, syrup. Yeah, yeah Toronto, yeah. maple. Boston is... So clearly they're, they've already won in that case, yeah. right? Because they've got, I, a, got a whole advantage. Syrup. Probably, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm lost. Where are we are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really just want to preview the match if you, yeah. if you please. Massachusetts syrup versus Toronto the, the maple. match coming up. Because I am... Almost certain that uh, Toronto may have expected to see uh, the Washington uh, in this particular match. Uh, obviously, short turnaround for Toronto to prepare. They did have some time to watch both of those teams play. And I think from a compositional perspective, we most likely not going to see any surprises here from either team, or are we? No, well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm sure actually Toronto is breathing a sigh of relief because they're like, well, we don't have to deal with anything strange. They know what they're facing up against, as you said, compositionally. So now they just have to come in and play clean. We did just see them fall to the Florida Mayhem, primarily in that mirror matchup. But the Boston Uprising is a very different team with very different strengths. They should be able to take that break, just see how Boston Uprising play, and then take that knowledge into this matchup. Yeah, I mean, there are two ways to look at this, really. I mean, the Boston Uprising, they're warmed up, ready to go now. Got a quick 3-0 as well, so you're feeling good. The momentum is there. You can even reiterate, like, coach coming in and saying, like, hey, yeah, we did win 3-0, but, like, let's be a bit more aggressive. Let's push the tempo. Maybe Seeker finds a few picks. I think going into this matchup, the Toronto Defiant players, they're like, well, we're the better starting team. Like, we're going we're gonna <laughs> to get, get away with a win here. Like, we should win this one. But if Seeker finds a few picks with the Sojourn in this meta and, like, Hotpa, you know, he had a few questionable graviton yeah. surges in the previous match, right? Maybe Boston wins the map, and then you're thrown to the fire, and you're like, uh oh. <laughs> this, this uh -oh. Is good. How, how do we how do we turn this around, right? So Throw to the Fiant, I would definitely say they're the favorite in this matchup, but because of like the meta and also like the dynamics of like coming into Boston being good now in good form, this could go either way. I do want to say as well, I think the linchpin of this series for the Boston Uprising is going to land on Victoria. Someone who has been playing the Genji, not really known for that hero, but he just played very, very well. If he can get that same level of success against the Defiant, I think that could give the Boston Uprising a pretty good edge. That is like, I'm ready. <laughs> well, let's take a look yeah. at predictions for that one. I don't think anyone is going bust. Unless... Um, unless Jonathan really tries to ah. knock up. This was your opportunity, it, Johnny, to go lone yeah. wolf again. You're going to say that every time from now on, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah actually. Come to the playoffs, is going to be like that. I will say, you know, it seemed like the Boston Uprising, they were having a bit of a watch party there for, you know, their team, yeah. fans attending and stuff like that. Look, we're sorry, all right? Don't let our picks, you know, make you believe that you don't have a chance, all right? Don't trust our picks. If anything, our picks are generally horrible. So, <laughs> believe in your yeah. team. Boston fans. I, we, all, we all just listen to someone because someone said Toronto is going to win. So Is that why you went for Toronto? Yeah. Because someone? <laughs> so I could just blame it on someone. Yeah, like, yeah. They lose. That's smart. Yeah. You can just yeah. Like... So wait, why don't you make my picks for me and then I can <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you get your picks? That's how you I do my questions. Other... Like, hey, oh, what do you think is going to win? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, smart. That has to be illegal or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's friend. work smart, not hard. Oh, okay, so I can respect that. I am super excited to get this match going because, again, one ticket on the line the other team has to go home and will end their 2022 season we're ready for it but first we're heading into a very quick break and then afterwards we're gonna be ready for all the action in our last and our final match of the 2022 regular season here in the play-ins let's go let's go Woo!